everybody, welcome back to Art Shop with John Rouse Palmer. We are here at the Bramer, uh, it's his studio and my, studio my everything and gallery and home in, <laughs> here in Houston. So, welcome and welcome, John. Good to talk to you again. You too, John Bishop. I'm glad to continue on our conversations about art and how we can help other people do more of it. Excellent, exciting. Listen, I thought today maybe we'd talk a little bit, and I've heard you say before how important it is that as artists we are business people mm -hmm. and, and as much as we're selling art we're selling a persona right we're it, mm -hmm. it's we're as much of our brand as we are what we sure sell. sure um what i think is very important there's a benefit and there's um, something to be aware of because mm -hmm. of that you can open a business and if it doesn't do well you can declare bankruptcy and walk away from it and right. i do think that is a benefit for people who really need it Mm -hmm. um, uh, Abraham Lincoln declared bankruptcy, yeah. you know, so you never know what he did business. Fairly well. He did. <laughs> he did. And so you just never know um, how business is going to go. Right. You can predict. But when you have your art business, you can't do that right. because it's your image. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful to always do the best you can to be the best you, the most authentic you. Because if you're not transparent, people know and they don't want to be involved in something that's fake. Right. So the value of that is every January 1st, you don't start at zero. You start at what you've built in your career mm -hmm. for whatever years you put time into it. So it keeps compounding. Um, so that's an incredible thing when you work for yourself and you self-brand what you do as an artist does. But then again, you also have to do the best and really bust your rear end mm -hmm. to um, hustle and make things happen because things aren't going to happen on their own. Sure. So you got to be the best you, you got to do your art that you love, be authentic to that, be authentic to other people. Um, and if you do those basic things and you create a product such as, let's say, art, a painting, and you put it in the marketplace, it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. But how many artists don't even get it to the marketplace? Exactly. Yeah. They talk about it, why it won't work, why it can't happen. So if you make a product and you put a price tag on it, something eventually is going to happen. It will sell. Mm -hmm. I've never made a painting I haven't sold because I put a price on it. I put it out there. I promote it. I put it in the market. So um, your product is you, and you can be the rarefied one to sell your product if you do some simple things sure. in business also. Can we talk a little bit about some of those things? I mean, I hear artists all the time who just, they just want to go close the door and paint, and that's <laughs> fine. You should, if that's how you work, fine. But you've got to put yourself out there as well. It, it, you can't just put your artwork out. They, people have to know who you are and, and identify with you. Don't you think? I mean, What's well, so funny, that is spot on. Mm -hmm. That artists want that. But what business, what career, what way of making money in the world are you able to go into a room and shut the door and be successful? Right. Nothing. Yeah. You have to be out there. You have to be putting what you do in front of other people or nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to come into your little one-bedroom apartment and you're going to be discovered as an artist. That's not going to happen. You have to put it out there. So with that, um, what was that question? I'm sorry, I got well, off it's track. Just the, the, the importance of selling yourself in the sense that, that you have to open yourself up and, and let people in mm -hmm. because part of that is the story of the art. And, and it seems to me, and I think we've talked about this before, people often buy the story as much as they buy the mm -hmm. art. I mean, that, that, that sure. sells it. Sure, they want, they want to buy into something that's magical, yeah. something that's beyond just a painting. I always think I do more than sell a painting. I really think the painting is the byproduct of right. my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I do a byproduct that people collect. Mm -hmm. So I think within that, when you do authentic work and you put it out there, things will happen. And just saying about a business that you can be in and be in a room by yourself, there is one, and that would be if you're a billionaire. A billionaire? And you know the billionaires that do that are crazy. Yeah. Because they have so much money, they're able to remove themselves from any anxieties out in the world, because we all have anxieties, and we all have stresses. Life's not always easy. But wouldn't you rather hustle for your own passion than somebody else's passion? Right. So when you do get that money like a billionaire, you get crazy. 
So there, that is a, a billionaire profession. You can be a recluse and make money, but I think that's the only one. Yep, that's the only one I can think of. I mean, even a radio personality, you may not see them, because I'm often surprised when I see radio hosts and go, wow, that's what they look like. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, now I know why you do radio. <laughs> that's basically, their, their, their personality is selling their station. Their, their, yeah, their, their voice, sharing, sure. You know? And you know it's that voice you're attracted to in the morning on a radio station that right. just, there's something about their voice you can't explain if you're like, man, or they have a great voice. Or between people that, that makes you want to listen yeah. to them participate. And, and to me, the knowing who the artist is and maybe something about the artist's story is part of that, part of our programming, mm -hmm. you know? Also, made it, you made a good point just now when you're listening to two people interact on the radio. Yeah. And sometimes now it's almost like four people sure. in, that, in that, that booth, whatever they call it. Because one person's boring. Well, it might be, yeah. You know, Maybe after a time, after just, a certain amount of time, even if they're interesting, yeah. that's what I love doing this with you because nobody just wants to hear one person talk because it becomes yeah. monochromatic and right. you lose interest. Um, and that's what I think is so important about the coaching I'm doing with artists Excellent. is if your voice is the only voice out there, it's not as interesting if you don't bring somebody along with you right. that can edify you, introduce you to other people talk about ideas with, mm -hmm. have goals, because a lot of artists don't even know how to put their mind around a goal because they don't think they're gonna make money in it. Right, and what's right. their goal? I wanna make a lot of money. Well, that's never gonna happen if it's that vague and random. Mm -hmm. You need to say, I wanna make how much money? And one thing I think people don't do enough of, which I learned through always wanting to learn, is we ask so easily from the universe mm -hmm. what we want. Mm -hmm. I wanna be famous, I want this. But the issue with most of those requests are we don't ever say what we're going to do in return. Right. So I think if you really want something to happen, you have to say what you're going to give back. For example, say you want a new car and you have the money to do it and you've worked hard. So, but you don't really, you're not really there yet, but you're on your path. So say when you get your new car, your old one, you're going to donate to charity. You know, say I'm going to give something back if I get what I want. Sure. Um, and that's probably not practical for a lot of people, but if you want something, that's a bug in here. Commit to what you're giving back. There's, there's one bug in here. One bug, and you know the we one bug, it. I'm gonna we get you. <laughs> um, is you have to say what you're gonna give back. So when I decided to do my art full time, which was basically an overnight decision, mm -hmm. and I never looked back. There you go. Mm -hmm. I said to the universe, to God, to heaven, um, if I am successful in my art, I will give back to other artists. Mm -hmm. And I said, I won't wait and do it when I'm at the end of my career. I'll do it right when I become successful. Sure. So that's what I did. But I remember making that commitment. So if I get this thing that I think is important for me, I'm going to give something back. And I think that um, you'll get those things quicker in your life if you're willing to give back if you get something that you want. But I think we only ask and we don't talk about what we're going to do to give back to somebody else. And that can be, that being vulnerable like that, being open, can, can be a little daunting for some people. I mean, particularly, I think a lot of artists are kind of private people. And to think that you have to have this public persona, and, and the only model you have is like Andy Warhol and yeah. like Dolly, you yeah, know, yeah. people who are just outlandishly out there in the press. Uh, but yeah, it can be a little vulnerable. Sure, know? and part of the coaching is you're not by yourself. Right. You're not having that first show without getting information from somebody who's done a lot of shows, mm -hmm. who's been able to put it out there. My goal in the coaching is not to make people like me. Yeah. I mean, you can like me, but not you know, like me as a, not like me as an artist. You can adore me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love my art. Love my art. Bye, bye, bye. Um, uh, <laughs> make you like as yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is um. You have somebody helping you get those milestones started. Uh -huh. So you're not out there not knowing what to do. Right. Um, first question a lot of artists ask, how, well, how do I price my art? Mm -hmm. Which is a big question. But when I look at somebody's career, I look and see what kind of things have happened. And some might be big, some small, but there's mm -hmm. something to start a market value. And then what you want to do is every year, every other year, go back and see what accomplishments you've made or claims. Um, things in your career that justify a price increase. Mm -hmm. And when you do a price increase, it's done methodically because you never want to go down. Right. You, you want to protect your market. I think a very good example is Rolex, the watchmaker. Do you know Rolex is a nonprofit? 
It's I a did, not. I did not know that. It's a not-for-profit business. Yes. Um, wow. They, they pay their employees and their their executives, but their mission from early on said all the money is going to go back into making the best watch in the world. Wow. It's a nonprofit, and um, it takes about a year to make one mm-hmm. a Rolex watch. Um, and do you know where they got the word Rolex from? They got together and they said that word sounded very rich. It does That's why indeed. they chose Rolex, mm-hmm. which I think is just very interesting. But Rolex has been very careful to protect their market. Mm-hmm. Um, besides counterfeits and fakes, you're going to have that of right. every product. Even my art, there's been counterfeits mm-hmm. in China and whatever. What can you do? Yeah. But um, if you have a Rolex watch and it's authentic, it has a value. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to go find that watch half price at some other store in another country or another state because they have a market value and they protect it. Mm-hmm. And so what you have to do with your art is you have to do the same concept where you, you can't go get it cheaper somewhere else. You know, um, if you're a watch store, of course, they're going to get some price off because they sell it. That's their job. Sure. But their market is very protected, and you know if you have that watch, you've paid a certain amount of money for it. Mm-hmm. Your art needs to be handled and protected the same way. So artists might have their art in their studio, and they're so lucky they get a show at a gallery. So what do they do? They double the prices for the gallery show. It's the worst thing you could ever do. Right. Well, I'm giving half away. No, you're investing half back into the gallery. That's putting up a lot of money, sure. property, time, promotion to give you a show. They deserve their cut. In average, all retail, 50% goes to the manufacturer end of it, and then 50%, the person that's the store, the lights, all the production to put that product on the shelf. And the hardest thing for somebody to do in this world, you can have great products. There's a lot of them out there. The hardest thing is to get it on that shelf, yep. to get something in Home Depot, to get something in some mainstream. That's what takes all the money and the work to do, not to make the product. You know, we used to have a lot of artists, uh, particularly writers, uh, come to the libraries when I was a librarian Mm. abroad, and they would always tell me that they make two to three times as much on visiting schools as they do on selling their their writing. Wow. So that they're really in the market of doing book talks. Uh, That's where they're making their money. Wow. And it's like... That was never their intention when they were writing. Sure, they're going to make a book and make royalties. Right, 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 right. But I mean, that, that was the cold reality is if I'm going to live off my, my children's books, mm-hmm. I have to go and promote them. Yeah. You know? And um, I think it's common now with musicians that you know the money for the bands or the performers is the touring. That's where they make the money. Well, now and the records are kind of dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, but to make the real money in their pocket, it's going out there, um, getting on a bus and touring the world. And sharing and making yourself vulnerable, going out on Sure, stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, the part that is magic in this world to do is to be able to sell to a consumer. Yeah. To be able to bring money in. Again, the galleries invest a lot in artists, and so if a gallery's done that for an artist, the artist better respect that gallery Mm -hmm. and don't sell around them because it's going to come back. And I've had artists that I've represented in the past who've done that, and I always find out. Mm -hmm. And so it destroys that relationship. Um, You're building something, and you don't want to burn the bridges with people that are helping you because, again, the gallery, the establishment, what we're talking about right now, is investing in you in faith that you're going to respect the relationship sure. because they're putting a lot into you. So that's important to always respect the business relationship because in this world, the reality is if somebody is not profiting off what you're doing, they're not going to have interest in it mm-hmm. because we have to pay the bills. We have to make money. Right. They have a business model. As yeah. Well. yeah. Nobody pays the bills. Mm-hmm. No, you've got to make the money. You have to make the money. Now, you often talk about the fact that we don't need necessarily go through the gallery structure, mm-hmm. but how do you as an artist, I mean, you, you talked about the, the kind of the luxury model that you're, you're kind of building this persona of being selling luxury goods. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, I suppose we all are. Is it, but does, can you have a different persona? I mean, some people are the, the bad boy, uh, the, the kind of extravagant, I don't remember the lady's name who does all the polka dots. She's got this, this kind of bohemian, 
uh, persona. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be kind of that snooty, exclusive no. look. But I mean, I'm not not knocking that. Yeah. But uh, Rolex watch wouldn't do well if they were selling, uh, you know, athletic gear for mountain climbing. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, that's not the watch you buy. <laughs> no, correct, correct, right. Um, so what was your question? I'm trying to comment on that. I'm just trying to say that how do you build... I suppose you have to kind of decide who you're going to be, who mm -hmm. you're going to present yourself as in you presenting your kind of market persona. Yeah, so the way you present yourself is who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not changing. Yeah, you couldn't fake that, could you? No. I, not effectively. No, you just... I'm, I've always been who I am. I always dress the way I've dressed. I never changed anything because I became an artist. Mm -hmm. um, I just think if you, whatever you are, don't work too hard at it. Just yeah. let it be what it is. Just, yeah, because people are going to relate to that better. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think there's any kind of persona to build. I think the only persona you do want to build is maybe work back to who you really were when you were right. born, more right. authentic. And that all the layers of, if you do this for a living, you have this shield on you or this. Um, because I think that's going to give you an easier life, mm -hmm. too. I remember one of the biggest things that... <laughs> After I didn't care about it anymore, it was paint getting on my clothes. Like I might there have nice go. clothes, and uh -huh. I would think one dot, it's ruined. I don't care. Yeah. I got a lot of those shirts. <laughs> I, I had an event the other night here, Happy Hour. Uh -huh. Very successful. And Good I had guys. this one of my favorite shirts on. It was It's a white polo shirt. White. I hate white. But it's so attractive in the store to get white. So I would go walk the dogs. I put a jacket on that I've laid onto oil paint. Which dries real fast, right? So I put the jacket on. I don't know. All that paint is now all down my arm, all on the white shirt. And I just knew it was never going to come out. I knew it. But I went ahead and washed it that night. Didn't come out. So I went and got that palette, and I put blue dots all over the shirt. There you go. It looks so cool, John. <laughs> I wish I had it on now to show you. Now you got a designer The line. old me would have thrown that shirt away. Oh, absolutely. Now it looks better than before. I will show you that shirt. So it's kind of those things. With whatever happens, make it work. Yeah. Don't try to be perfect. That's so boring. And it yeah. makes you exhausted. I just heard an interview with, uh, is it Marina Abramowitz, the lady who does all the performance stuff since the 60s. Mm. And she said, I used to always think that my art had to come from pain. And she's like 77 now. And then she said, How I don't want to do that anymore. I'm kind of happy. <laughs> There she is. Said, I don't know if people are going to respond to this, but I'm I'm tired of being sad and pained and struggling. Where did the myth of that even begin? I don't know. To think but... somebody that's happy, creative, we're only going to look at your work if it's heavy and dark. Can you imagine doing that for thirty years? No, I wouldn't do it for a day. I mean, like, I mean, there's there's times if you're going through heavy things to authentically put it out in your art, but if, if you think the focus of being an important artist or relevant is it's all about pain, you're very misguided. Well, you know, I, I suppose unless pain is an important part of your life. If that's really you know, who you are. It's authentic. Then I've it's, never met anybody their whole life's about that's pain. I not true of anyone out there. But I've never met anybody their whole life's about pain. Yeah, yeah. So um, if that person's in, out there, I'm glad they have their art to uh, vent and, and work through it. Exactly. But... Um, in my art, I share the excitement of my life and the mm -hmm. happiness. Now, and I have, when I have other things going on. But you couldn't fake that, is what no, I guess yeah. I was headed. If you were really, really happy, don't, don't paint sad uh, art. <laughs> nobody wants that. <laughs> now, you might have some boring critic somewhere that thinks it's so great because it's so heavy, but yeah. do you think you're ever going to sell it? No. Yeah. Do you think you're ever going to build a big career off of it? No. But you might get one article by one cr critic and what's that going to do for you? Because right. I always say to people that when I hear criticism, I'm like, well, I'm glad you're here because I always need people like you to watch my parade go by. Sure. So mm -hmm. stand back and I'm going to keep moving. Mm -hmm. um, because once people quit criticizing you, you're not doing anything great. Well, yeah. You know, when you, the, the most hated person in the world is... Whoever the, is the, the critic, yeah. Well, the hey, most hated in the world is always whoever is the seated president of the United States. Oh, absolutely. Because they're the most powerful. No way you can do it. Right. They're the most powerful. Yeah. So the more power you will yield, the, the, the more influence you have, people that are jealous and can't do it or are afraid or threatened by you being successful, the only way they can justify them not doing anything is to criticize you. Sure. So when that ever happens, 
be excited. Mm -hmm. One article came out many years ago, and I was upset about it before I kind of learned what this is about, and I brought it to a friend for lunch who was a very successful business person. Show him the article, then at the end I'm like, can you can believe they said this? And he goes, man, I respect you so much now. I love they said that. I'm like, wow, you know, it just flipped mm -hmm. the switch. It's like, you're right. You know, I thought he'd be like, God, well, are you really not a good artist from what they said? Uh, no, that, I'm a great that, artist. That tore it, yeah. <laughs> so, it's out. Secret, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a thing. Uh. <laughs> so I think what's exciting about the coaching and helping people through Art Shop is to help them start wherever they are and to get things going because don't wait. Right. You wait, and you wait your whole life away and you never get what you want. Don't be reactive, mm -hmm. be proactive, and things will happen. We're sitting here today because we woke up, made the intention to talk. Sure. I'm sure I visualize us sitting here talking. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. If you're not doing that in your day-to-day -day life, you're just reacting to everybody else. Right. Oh, right. and the reason I wanted to have this talk up here today, mm -hmm. this is um, what we call Gallery One, it's the bungalow, and this bungalow is officially 100 years old today. I mean, this, this year, today. Oh, <laughs> today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday this year. Um, but I want to reflect in a very positive way. I used to do a Facebook thing in the mornings during the COVID pandemic. And it was just so depressing. Mm -hmm. But I remember I thought, I have to do something. But it'd be sitting at this table, everything was gloomy. The world was gloomy. Yeah. You were afraid your Stuck neighbor has COVID. And, oh, yeah, exactly. it was so gloomy. It was like every day was just gloomy. And uh, so I want to be back here today to say how great things are and that we all got through that. Yeah. And to also know when things are tough right now, for whatever reason, to acknowledge that we still haven't totally recovered from pan the pandemic. No, no, that's absolutely true. And when things are going not your way, just know that we are still dealing with that. So give yourself some space mm -hmm. and don't um, stress yourself out. We're, we've come so far, but we're not really gonna know kind of the way we, the stresses we had on ourselves and our business um, for a long time from now yeah, still, especially yeah. younger people that were in early, school. Yeah, yeah so back at it. this yeah. room is now healthy. This room is now healthy. Healthy and 100 years old. Healthy and 100 years old. That's the only thing I ask. That's the only thing we're going to get. <laughs> well, great. Thanks so much. Thanks, uh, John Bishop. We will talk again very soon. Hope you guys have a great week. And you know one thing about, I love Sorry. about your name is um, that's a power name. Thank Has you. Anybody, ever, anybody ever told you that? No. So just real brief. <clears throat> so some names are hard to say and complicated mm -hmm. or whatever. But I was just thinking, you know, John Bishop is very clean, crisp. It's like, you know, like it's a very... Well, people would call power name, which is very clean and direct. I just thought I'd share you get because your name. One thing is, you have no control over it. That's true. And people who change their name, you always question why. Mm -hmm. So you're lucky to have a good name. I did All right. my best. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay, y'all. Bye bye. Bye now.